welcome to Sports Playback, the show that brings you the best highlights, scores, and matchups from all your favorite schools. Lawndale losing or Hawthorne, we've got them all. Back with another exciting show for you, I'm Karen Bright. Wednesday was a wild one in the Ocean League as the top seed proved too much for one local squad. A league contender battled to keep their standing and Pioneer League play. It was a nail biter as we saw a rematch of its number one team against the team they beat by just one point a few weeks ago. First though, we head to Hawthorne where the Cougars hosted the Ocean League's undefeated Beverly Hills Normans who came in with an impressive 17-5 record. In a rebuilding year for the Cougars basketball, the task was too much for the young squad as they fell 77-41 to Beverly Hills. Next, we head out to Sam High, where the number two Lawndale Cardinals went head to head with number three Santa Monica. A win would help the Cards secure their rank, while a loss would tie both teams up for second place. Coach Hecht and his squad didn't get the job done the first time around as a visitor, but home court was a different story. They squeaked by Lawndale this time, 59-54 the final. To the Pioneer League we go now. The league's best 6-1 losing Olympians hosted the disciplined and determined Torrance Tartars eager to avenge the one-point home loss they suffered the last time these two teams met. Losinger took command off the tip, leading early, but the Tartars battled their way back and from that point on, it was nothing but intense competition. Both teams fighting for every point like it was the fourth quarter. Darian Williams and Mookie Carr having fun with it. Close out the half, up 27-23. After an extended halftime, Torrance returned to the court, passing around Losinger, opening up the shot and taking command of the game as the clock wound down. But then it happened. All at once, the reality of a possible loss clicked in and the Olympians took the court like a team possessed. Christian Odionu got it started and that was just the beginning. His fourth quarter alone, a highlight reel in itself. Just ridiculous. Is that the focus Coach Parvaz was looking for? Christian Odionu puts up a monster 18 points on the night, 16 of them in the fourth quarter alone. And a finally healthy Mookie Carr added eight, but also made big leadership contributions on the court, helping the new guys hit their assignments. And it's only going to get better as the playoffs approach, as the top spots in both the Ocean and Pioneer Leagues are still on the table. Tonight, the action continues. Friday Night Lights and the Hawthorne Cougars face another tough matchup ahead. The Cougs will try to dig out of last place as they head to Eagle territory. El Segundo has the better record, but they're young, and that might open the door for Hawthorne's athletic and emotionally driven team to take advantage. Also on the court tonight, it's a Pioneer League showdown as the top two teams tip off at Lou House. Still minus sophomore phenon Devin Newton, Mookie Carr and Christian Odionu will see if their squad can continue to improve as a unit as they host the 12 and 10 South Spartans. Now for the game of the week, this Ocean League team is working from home tonight straight from the Cards Nest. Coach Brownlee and his 14 and 9 Lawndale Cardinals will try to hand Beverly Hills their first league loss as they host the 18-5 Normans. The last time these two teams met, Beverly Hills came from behind in the fourth to win it by just one point. Can the Cards finish the job tonight? Will the Twin Towers, Chemezi, Metu, and Brodericks Jones lock down Lawndale's number two spot? It's going to be a great game and you don't have to wait any longer. For Sports Playback, I'm Karen Bright. Let's send it down to the court. Lou, take it away. All right, thank you very much, Karen, and what a matchup it's going to be between the Beverly Hills Normans and the Lawndale Cardinals, first place on the line in the Ocean League. It absolutely is. Lawndale has to win tonight to have a shot at the title. Beverly Hills sitting atop, and they're going to need some help, but they've come close when they were up at Beverly Hills, and they're expecting to turn the table tonight at home. Egidio DeLay, who is going to be with the Beverly Hills Normans, and they bring some tall guys in. Exactly, a lot of tallness and a lot of height and a lot of talent on this team. Uh, this is a team that barely escaped uh, Lawndale last time. They won 57-56 by one point, and they're coming off a defeat, of, excuse me, off a win against Hawthorne. They defeated Hawthorne by 36 points, Lou. So this team is coming in here. They're ready, and uh, the Beverly Hill Normans need to take down this team to continue this great season they're having. 
And not only did they lose to Beverly Hills, but also to Price in another tough loss and a lot of games in a little few they, days. They certainly did. They had four games over a six day stretch and that took its toll. Also sandwiched in there was a defeat against Santa Monica, a team that they had handled very easily here at the Cardinal Cage, but went up to Santa Monica, had a bit of a problem, but they're undefeated at home. They're 3-0. and oh. This is their house and they expect to defend it tonight. In the Cardinal cage indeed, and uh, watching the Cardinals is McCall Hall. You're going to be watching the matchup between Shemezi and, Sh and the Comanche. Yes, I am. And see, here's the thing. If you lose by one, that stings. So I feel like Londale's going to come back tonight with a lot of heart. They don't want the same situation. All right, so here's the deal. They have to be aggressive on defense. They have to be aggressive on offense. You can't teach size. With two 6'10 guys, they have to pound the ball down low. And when they're on defense, they have to know where the shooters are at. They don't want to get beat on both ends. And they want to send a message going into the playoffs. I'm taking Lawndale tonight. And then Beverly Hills also has a, a hired gun. He comes off the bench and Ryan Manucherry. It absolutely does. They've got a couple of guns. Now their coach Jarvis Turner, who, who was pretty much a bulldog in his own right at USC, knows how to pick certain kind of guys. You know, to give you a measure of how big this game is, Lou, they've brought in three officials for tonight's contest, a rarity at this level outside of the playoffs. So everybody's expecting it to be a fantastic game. And Rashawn Haylock, this game has not only league but also uh, playoff implications as well. Very much so. This Lawndale team, as you know, Lou, has a lot of goals. And at the top of that list is winning a league championship. But those, those chances are in jeopardy. And after that loss to Santa Monica last week, you find yourselves now two games behind this Beverly Hills team, who's unscathed, 7-0 at the top of the list. So you got to win here tonight, priority number one. And then, of course, you need some help. Beverly Hills plays Santa Monica next week. Maybe you get some help there. But you got to take care of your business here at home first. And Coach Brown Brownlee said with his team having to have played some games away from home, maybe some home cooking will be, do them some good here tonight. That's right, and they have to snap not only their losing streak, but also the Normans winning streak. They absolutely do. Normans are 7-0 and in league play, 18-5 and overall. But this is a very good Lawndale team, and we know that. And any team that has Chemezi Metu and Broderick Jones on it as a start, along with Beckles and the rest of that crew, never, ever count them out. Tip-offs right around the corner. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. Back court side of the Cardinal cage, and we're just about ready to sing a, well, I don't know about, I'm not gonna sing it, but uh, Karina Estrada is gonna sing our national anthem a Lawndale senior.
Rita Estrada with the, an accompaniment from the student section at the end of the national anthem and another good job by Corita Estrada. So now we're going to meet the Beverly Hills Normans, 18 and five, seven and oh, first in the Ocean League, three and one on the road, Rufus, and winners of nine in a row. They are hot to say the least. And first one off the bench is number 31, Jalen Sands, and he is headed to Arizona. Number 22, Trevor Berger, a senior. And number 21, a big matchup we're going to be keeping an eye on, Chance Comanche, the senior center. Number four, a junior coming, Denzel Holtz, one of the guards. And number two, Eamon Raffelian, the senior. The Normans are coached by Jarvis Turner in his fifth year out of USC. And now the Lawndale Cardinals are about to be introduced. 14 and nine overall, five and two, second in the Ocean League, a disappointing loss to Santa Monica in uh, their last league game by five points at Sam Hahn. The Cardinals have lost two and oh, but they're three and oh here in the cage. First to be introduced, number zero, Tedrick T.J. Johnson, the six foot senior guard. Next off the bench, number one, a 6'10", 210 pound senior headed for San Diego State, Broderick Buda Jones. Number 24, a 6'2", 160 pound senior guard, Delano Beckles, always entertaining. Always. And number 25, Chris White, a 6'3", senior, and he's headed for Utah. And in the middle, number four, 6'10", 195 pound senior, headed for USC, Shemezi Matu. The head coach of the Cardinals is Chris Brownlee. In his third year, 58 and 22, his assistant is Johnny Parker. And this Lou promises to be one of the best big men matchup that we'll see all season. I mean, I mean, you got two guys, three guys actually, three big men on the floor who are all going to premier Division I programs. You mentioned Chance Comanche at Beverly Hills, who's on his way to Arizona. Buddha's going, going to San Diego State, and Chimizi's going to USC. So they'll be battling each other in the Pac-12 <laughs> right. next year. That's going to be a lot of fun. I well, I'm sorry, great. I was going to tell you, I appreciate the crew. I mentioned before, three-man crew. John Fierro is the referee, and he's joined tonight by Nathan Blake and Lonnie Bennett. And John is about ready to put the ball in play. Broderick Jones, Buddha, is going to be jumping against Chance Comanche. Comanche wins the tip, and we're underway here at the Cardinal Cage. Comanche has the ball high up top of the key. Looks like a zone, man flex zone put on by the Cardinals right away. The ball is thrown out of bounds and turned over to the Cardinals. So good defense by the Cardinals. Good defense, and what I was watching, Lou, was how were they going to defend Comanche, and they showed a bit of a zone and then a bit of a double team. So they're giving him different looks right off the bat. Ball is dumped down to Shemezi. But he can't, he's cut off at the baseline, so he takes a fall. Nice right fall away jumper. A good start for Shemezi and the Cardinals. Just barely 35 seconds into it. And what I like about that start, Lou, is that it didn't start with this attempt to get a slam dunk or go mano mano against Comanche. Nice fall away jumper. Went down for him. And that ball tipped away by Comanche and will go over to the Lawndale Cardinals. And shooting that ball was Trevor Berger missing the three-point shot. Bringing the ball across the line is TJ. Now Semezi is blocked by Jalen Sands. So that's Jalen's first personal, first team foul. Ball will be out of bounds to the Cardinals. Semezi thought about taking the three. Now TJ with it. Skipped across and a three-point shot taken, won't go down. 
for Delano Beckles, and the Normans come up with it. Denzel Holt, the point guard, being guarded by Beckles. And gets it off of his foot, and that's going to be across, uh, taking it across the a line. Turnover, yep. Over and back, so that's the second turnover for the Normans here in the early going. Glad you joined us on City TV. As TJ gets it to, gets it back from Shemezi. And the Cardinals look pretty active. Actually, yes. Shemezi looks pretty active tonight with the offensive yes. rebound. Gets it out to Buda. <laughs> and he puts it up in a beautiful pass by Shemezi. Holt brings it across, gets a screen from Sands. Sands now with the shot from the free throw line. And now the, the Normans are on the board. P.J. brings it across. Chris White, now Buda, being guarded by Comanche. A wow. long three It's a long two. His big toe is on the line. <laughs> so anyway, a nice shot. Buddha said, all right, Comanche, if you're going to give it to me, I'll take it. Absolutely. And what they're doing, boys, if they're showing they can knock down the outside shot, which will open up the inside for them. Three-point shot taken by Berger, and he nails it. That seems to be his spot, Rufus. And it's a one-point game just like that. So you think the Cardinals, they might fall in love with their outside shooting? I don't think they will, but I think they're taking what they're giving them. That one, not able to convert on it. Oh, oh a nice steal by Beckles, yeah. but it's taken back by Rebellion. And a foul call is going to be on Chris White. Or is it? It is on Chris White. Good call by the official. He saw him on the reach and grab the bit of the Beverly Hills player. And there you see Beckles with the tip, almost getting the steal. And we're in for an active night. Well, I don't know about you, but the hair's up on the back <laughs> of my neck and on my forearms right now. As the shot's taken by Raffaellin, will go down, rebound right. up high by Chris White. Back comes TJ. Over to Beckles for a long two, no. Nice rebound by wow. White, couldn't do yeah. it. But Chance Comanche gets the rebound oh. and almost stolen away, but Rebellion <laughs> takes it back again, saving the Normans bacon. And this is the layup, rebound to White. And Chimizzi says, hey guys, let's slow it down for a second. Uh, he can be a, the force on this team, can he? Absolutely. It's good to see his maturity tonight so far, even though it's not even halfway through the first quarter. I'm going to guess that they're going to need to show more. Oh! Oh! You want okay, it more? You, you got more. Wow. Wow. You talk about a tomahawk slam dunk. Oh, but you need to. Look at the wow. replay. Ah. <laughs> the Trojan Nation is excited and waiting for this young man to get there. Jarvis Turner put his hands on his hips saying, yeah, that looked like me back in the day. <laughs> Shot taken by Berger, will go down, tipped up, chance, no. Shemezi on the run, around the back dribble. Now gives it up to TJ, over to White for three, uh, just a little short rebound, hustle by him two, uh, Comanche, there go. fouls him. Good aggressive play by Shemezi. And good aggressive play by Comanche as well, got him on the arm though, but that's what you gotta do. You gotta defend your basket and you gotta be willing to go at it if you should lose me to. Well, I told you this was going to be one of the most exciting big men matchups that we have seen in a long time. Lua Mitu converts the first. That's good to see, Shemezi. Looks like he's been working on him. I know that Coach Chris Brownlee has been trying to convince these players that they need to get better at the free throw line. Wow, and that one drew a lot of iron, didn't go down for him. But the trapping defense, and the Normans need help. A timeout is called before a backcourt violation was called with 3.33 left to go in the first quarter and a four-point lead. There's Jarvis Turner chewing okay. somebody on the ear that looks like Eamon Rebellion. Well, Coach Turner was very modest when we talked to him. Uh, not that he's a verbose guy to start with, okay? Well, he did a lot of coach speak by saying, <laughs> right. we're no good. Exactly, you know. 
You know you got a good head coach. There you see the uh, slam dunk there. Mercy. Wow. But uh, when Coach Turner gave me the good coach to speak, it's like, no, we're no good. I don't know how we won that in a row. Exactly. And you come in 18 and 5, 7 and 0 in league play on a nine game winning streak. But he professes to be no good. <laughs> I knew a few coaches. There's one guy named Herrick that did that. And uh, Henry Bibby, too. Even though he had some pretty good teams over there at USC. So you can see where the coaching chops come from on Jarvis Turner. And of course, all of Bibby's teams were defensive and oriented. And that's a five second violation. Count. That's a third turnover for the Normans by my count. Me, too. So now the Cardinals get it underneath their own basket. Shemezi wanted to go for the inbound <laughs> slam, but Chance said, uh-uh. TJ with it. Two-three zone shown by the Normans. Follow away. Wow! Shot by Shemezi. He's doing it from everywhere. Seven points for the senior. And he's showing them everything tonight. 315 left. You know, the other part of the equation. And, and he, with his good start is the hope that he stays out of foul trouble. So far, they're playing calm, cool, and collected as Chance Comanche misses it. And the rebound yeah. is taken by TJ. Over to Delano. He wants to go to the bucket. Does. Oh, <laughs> oh the ball is stuck. Okay. Chance okay. Comanche. Right. Pours that. So will it be out of bounds? Well, you go to the alternating possession, and the arrow favors uh the cardinals so that ball i mean we got our own deflate gate here maybe right so one of the things that i'm noticing that the cardinals got to be cautious of they've hung on the rim a couple of times that'll draw a team if the official determines that oh. you're hanging up there for nothing and comanche gets a block shot as beckles decides to challenge him and he says uh-uh well, that's good aggression by Delano. Trying to maybe get a foul about those long arms by Comanche. And he just blocks it out of bounds. Back out to Buda, or actually, that's the T. Yeah, that is Buda. Oh. And Chris White is there for the and rebound. No, but he's called. And that's going to go against Jaylen Sands. Sands. That'll be his second yep. third personal. With 2.30 left to go in the first quarter and a six point lead. White just missed that. But now Chris will get two at the line. No points tonight so far. Cardinals one out of two from the line. Make that two out of three. One point for Chris. And a game where every point's going to matter. Free throws are extremely important here. Buddha sits down. I believe that's uh, Snedeker in. And two points for White, and then it's a 13 to five lead for Lawndale. Into the corner, Berger with a three point shot. And wow. He's already got a stroke, Rufus. He's two out of three from outside. Puts him within five points. And now it looks like the Normans might be warming up. TJ with a follow away. No, rebound by White underneath the Snedeker, and he puts it up and in. Nice little bunny pass. So full court pressure being shown by Lawndale again. That seems to be working for him tonight, Rufus. Certainly does. Of course, they, they've seen this team. They know what they're up against. Navid Rafaelian in the ball game now for the Normans. Ball is put up, blocked, wow. but we got a foul on the play. Yes. And Denzel Holt will get two shots at the line. Wow, is he, is he calling that one against me too? Looks like, and from the reaction, it looks like that's who he gave the call to. We'll certainly double check it. Denzel makes the first one. And here comes another entertaining Cardinal, Brandon Newman in the ball game for Delano Beckles. Also in the ball game for The Normans, just Max Walder. You would expect yeah. the Normans to be a good free throw shooting team, and so far they are. 
So it's a five-point lead for the Cardinals. 140 left to go in the first quarter. Semezi's been in the game the entire time. Takes a three-pointer from the top yeah. of the key. That won't go down. Chris Brownlee won't like that. But good defense as Brandon Newman knocks it away from Chance Comanche. And that also knocks three seconds off the shot clock for Beverly Hills. And now Broderick Jones comes in for Chemezi. Chemezi with the one foul, we believe. Coach certainly wanting to make sure he gets the full benefit of me to tonight. He's already had the early good start. David Rafelian against Brandon Newman. Gets a screen from Walder. Now, Berger has it being hounded Ooh. by Quincy Pinker wow. to the ball game. And Pinker picks up the foul. Boy, man, they thought they had that one cleanly. They call that a reach. Call it a reach. Looks like Quincy may have grabbed some of the jersey. Three team fouls apiece. Walder gets it to Rafelian. And wow. a moving screen there. I believe that's yep. on Comanche. Yep. Well, let's. There you go right there, the block. Okay, well, if it is, you're right. That is Comanche, and that's his second. So no move by Jarvis Turner to get him off the bench. Under a minute left to go in the first. Brandon Newman on the baseline to Pinkert. Back outside to Buda with the hook shot. No, rebound put up. No, volleyball to TJ. 40 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Baseline and a pass back out. Taken by Snedeker, but he steps on the baseline. But again, Londell controlling the boards and controlling the loose balls. You know, Beverly Hills, they've got Chase Comanche, an all-star in his only right, but they've only got one man who's a board threat to this Lawndale Cardinal team, and that's Comanche. And so far, the Cardinals are taking advantage of that. Berger uh, wow. takes a foul. He's knocked down by Quincy, check that, by uh, Snedeker. By Snedeker, and let's see if that's going to be a, no, that's a two. Yeah, and he got him on the elbow. Good call by the official. So Trevor Berger coming to the line to shoot two with 17.2 seconds left. Rolls that out. Well, he's uh, one out of two from beyond the arc as Comanche takes a seat coming in is Amir Hajaroso. Rolled out again. So 0 for 2 on those free throws. 10 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Shot clock is dark for Brandon Newman and the Cardinals. Gets it back from Pinkert. Almost took the three. So Newman says, I'll take it. And misses badly with no time left on the clock. And the Cardinals will rest in the cage with a five point lead. Good first quarter for them as they jump out to. The five-point lead, as you mentioned, at 15-10 here on their home court. Of course, it's a four-quarter game. The, every game that they've played against this team, they've been there. So we've got McCall Hall ready to go. McCall. All right, to some of the fourth, fourth, fourth quarter, excuse me, first quarter, kind of goes like this. Mezzi gets busy. Um, Mezzi already has eight points, a dynamic slam down low on the putback. But the, here's the key stat for the first quarter for Londio. They forced five turnovers. It's very clear that even though Beverly Hills is a great team as a unit, when they're pressured with that defense that Lawndale's bringing them, they can't handle it. Chris White from Lawndale looked at Mezzi right before the half. He said, keep taking it down low. They cannot stop you. So be on the lookout for Mezzi to continue with his confidence, keep taking it down low, and for Lawndale to continue to pound it down on the block. Back to you guys. Exciting second quarter on the way. I think that's an understatement. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's already been exciting. 
But uh, these Normans are on a roll. Nine in a row. And their last loss was at Sierra Canyon. 79 to 51. Santa Monica and Price have beaten Lawndale in consecutive games. And quite a surprise of the Sam High game. But Jace Johnson and crew, they uh, they we saw their confidence at, at Hawthorne the other night. Absolutely, and right now, uh, Beverly Hills has Comanche on the bench because he has the two fouls by our count. Lawndale counted with both of their big men on the floor, although Trebizi has one foul of his own. Walder passes off to Horizon Suli, and now Brandon Newman takes it. Wow. No, rebound is up. No, it's a yes. need to. Nine points for Shemezi. A seven point lead, and Rafelian with the ball. Navid Rafelian. Max Walder with it. The ball is poked away and stolen right. by Quincy Pinkert. Right. Look out! Matu wow. had the ball, had his shot forced yeah. away by Haj yeah. Rasoli. And there you see Shemezi. Let's lo watch the good defense. Well, you see the replay. Let's let's see if we see. Okay, the official says good defensive effort. A little bit of contact being allowed. Nothing wrong with that, as long as the players understand how to play with the contact. 30 seconds left on the shot clock for the Cardinals after the out of bounds play. Snedeker gets it to Newman, dumps it down low, but it, Comanche back in the ball game, tips it away, and it's stolen from the Cardinals. Back comes Rafelian, quickly down court, had the shot blocked from behind, and yeah. now the pass. Oh, he walked. Comanche, Comanche yeah. has his shot well. blocked by Buddha, <laughs> and that gets a rise out of the crowd. And, now and a whistle. Yeah. Wow, and a foul. And this is going to be, if this is on Buddha, which, not Buddha, but uh, Chimizi, and it looks like it is, that's his second personal foul. At least that's what I've got. Is that what you got? Yep, two personals, five team fouls. So it's a loose ball foul. Coming out of the ball game is Berger for Beverly Hills. In the ball game, Ryan Manusheri. Their long range shooter. Brandon Newman appears to be on him. The shot by Rafelian, no. Rebound is to Shemezi. Brandon Newman sets up the offense to Snedeker. Shemezi comes on side. DeAndre from the top of the key, inside the key, and a beautiful jump shot. He has four points. A nine point lead for the Cardinals. They're making their shots. Beverly Hills isn't. Absolutely. There's a kid who can and <laughs> just misses his first shot. And then it's Sherry. And he's the one who hit lights out up at Beverly Hills. As Chris Brownlee said, he can shoot from 902 0 down to here. And is that a travel on Shemezi? So three turnovers on the Cardinals. Jamezzi with the spin move. Fischl picks it up as a travel, and that'll send, not that the travel sends him to the bench, but right now, Coach Brownlee, knowing that he has two fouls, wants to play a little bit conservatively, and that foul will go against Quincy Pinker. And that's his second. Now the Cardinals are out of fouls. That's their 16th foul. Plus Rufus, uh, shemezzi has been in the game the entire time, so. Nice time to take a blow. Navid Rafelian trying to go coast to coast, dumps it off the command. Wow. The ball is taken right out of his hands by Buddha Jones. <laughs> and these are two guys who are friends, and they're going at each other like they're mortal enemies. <laughs> well, you know how you, there it is. You know how you like to, oh, right. picked his pocket. He traveled. And Comanche oh puts it up and in. That's his first bucket of the game, Rufus. But you know when you're playing against best friends, you want to yeah. one-up them, especially at your house. Newman almost took the three, held it up. Boy, he's just itching to shoot. 
Haven't seen Beckles in a while as well. But that shot put up and in by DeAndre Stedekor. That could be one of the reasons. DeAndre with six points. David Rafelian hands the ball off on the weave to Denzel, and he is fouled by Quincy Pinkard, and that should be it for him. That's his third foul. Also the 17th foul, so one and one coming up for Denzel Holt and Beverly Hills. Berger coming back in as you see the foul by Pinkard, not the most intelligent of fouls. Right. <laughs> And coming to the line to shoot the one and one is Denzel Holt, who is two for two from the line so far tonight. Makes the first one. He has three points. There you see Chris Brownlee. Had a chance to see his mom and dad running the concession stand in the foyer. And Still have nope. his dad on the prayer train as he continues to battle cancer. And wow, the ball is thrown out of bounds. And DeAndre or Quincy Pinker thought that it was off of Norman. But we wish Chris Brownlee's dad and family all the best. Absolutely. And that turnover by Brandon Newman as he threw it out of bounds on the play. Now, Tedrick Jones being sent back to report in properly. You see the play right there, Rufus, as he was double teamed, and it's not a foul. Okay. Denzel Holt dumps it down to Comanche against Buddha. Gets Buddha up, and right. the shot won't go down. Rebound is off and taken by Snedeker. Actually, that's Chris White. And I like how Chris White is playing tonight. He's playing big, which is key for them. And a timeout called by White, who was caught on the sideline right in front of the Norman bench. And wisely calls a timeout to preserve, to preserve the uh, possession. So when I can't see the players' numbers, I usually rely on hairstyles or something. <laughs> DeAndre and Chris have similar yeah. dues tonight. And let's go over to a Gideon. Guys, Beverly Hills came in undefeated and in first place 7-0 in the Ocean League, but so far only has two rebounds for the first and second quarter. They're getting dominated on the boards. Also a lot of turnovers. That's a recipe for a disaster. So far they're trailing Wandell here as they look to make a statement. This is a statement game for the Normans, but still a lot of basketball left to be played. Hopefully they can turn things around as their search for their 10th win in a row. Guys, back to you. All right, I get you. 4-10 left to go in the first half. And a football score, 21 to 14 in favor of Lawndale. And a little bit of a break gives the fans. This is a packed house tonight. It is. Beverly Hills brought a lot of people down from the 90210. Good to see that. And stepping on the sideline is DeAndre. Got trapped against the sideline again, and when, you, and when you're in that position, as you can see, great camel work by the City TV crew. Are you surprised by that? Not in the least bit. How do you but think the fans they, are. No, no I don't. They, they're spoiled. <laughs> They've won the Star Award three times, led by Tom Strickfadden, wow. and Buddha wow. Jones has called for his first personal eighth team foul. So is that a shooting foul? Uh, it's a one and one foul. Should be right. one and one. Should be. Yep. It is. Semezi comes back in for DeAndre Snedeker. Comanche with just two points. Frustrated tonight in the scoring department. Makes the first one. Boy, that's good to see a big man who can shoot free throws. Yep. What do you say? He's the full package. Nope, so far, he is that. Makes the wow. second one, has four points. And now the Normans are inching a little closer. 
And they, and they take Comanche out with the two fouls, 351 left here in the first half. We'll see if they're just giving him a breather if they're shutting him down for the half to make sure that he can play the half with, with the majority of his fouls in his pocket. Do you think that uh, Coach Turner might be seeing how a smaller lineup might do against the Cardinals? Could be that as well, but if you got Comanche, you, you don't care about a smaller lineup. <laughs> Matu has it, nice little pass down to Beckles who has to throw it back out. White. Gets it back from TJ, who Got wanted him. to drive, and now over to Buddha, up and under, and off the glass, and it finds the bottom. Nice touch by Buddha Jones, half a dozen points. And the ball is stolen away and stolen back by Manus well, Jerry, and now a frustration foul. Well, it was, an act, it was an aggressive foul. They almost forced a turnover. This foul is going to go against uh, TJ on the play. Just got his arms hooked up with the uh, Beverly Hills player. Official right on top of it. Calls the foul. They're going to go to the line to shoot one and one as that's Ryan Manicherry. Mano Manicherry. That's it. <laughs> the kid who can shoot the lights out. Wasn't that a Kool-Aid you used to drink back in the day, Manor Cherry? That's for a goofy <laughs> grape. <laughs> Kids out there don't know what we're talking about, but the folks that, that hang around us, they, they know for sure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Score now is 21 to 18, or 23 to 18, pardon me. Both of those free throws were made by Manny Cherry. And, and a that, whistle. And here comes Comanche back, so it was just to give him a break, and that was a quick break. Um, so he's back with just under three left um, here in the second quarter. The Normans have a little bit of momentum going in this quarter, so why not take advantage of it and put your guy back in? To Messi, let's watch. Oh! <laughs> and a timeout as there's an injured Norman on the floor. Nana Cherry might have gotten run over by Semesi. <laughs> but he's got, that's his third dunk of the night. The baby Dr. J slam. There, there you go, I mean, that's what I was about to say, cupping it like the doctor. Getting things back in and speeding the ball into the front court this time are the Normans and Denzel Holt against Beckles and he'll lay it in and one. Well, so, well, three point opportunity as Beckles picks up his first foul and Holt scores the basket. Nice, ooh, nice ooh, play ooh. by Denzel. You, you think that was all ball? Well, you know, I understand the call. Let me just put it that way. That's a tough one if you're Beckles to have to take. So it could be a four point game if Holt makes this foul shot. And there's no reason to think that he won't. He's made the first four he took. That's right. And doesn't make this one. So nice play oh. by Manicherry, who knocks, actually, no, that's Walder, who throws the ball off of Buddha Jones on the rebound. There's a replay from the baseline. Guess he's going to say he got him on the arm as he was going. Some guys might call, some officials may call that a play on, but either way, um, it's official discretion and it's a good call. And Comanche. Tried to get it in on the inbounds, couldn't do it. An offensive rebound, no, and Lawndale catches a break. We're felling with good defense, though. Lobbed over to White. Now to TJ. Back over to Chris, dumps it down low to Buddha. 
Buda up and not in. Wow. Rebound is taken pull, away. Pull it out, by run White. clock, run clock. Two minutes and three seconds left in the half. And the ball okay. is knocked out of bounds. It'll okay. be Norman Ball. Okay, getting too, getting a little too fancy. The ball movement is good, but it's not, it's unfocused at the moment. And that's what upset Coach Brownlee a little bit. And the Normans can cut the lead down to two on this possession. A give and go, and a block shot by him at two on Rafaelian. Okay. I think you still need to slow it down. Where's your guard? Where's your guard? Ball is tipped by Rafaelian, Eamon Rafaelian. Now Matu against Comanche. Zone defense shown by the Normans and it's stolen away. Here comes Berger, gets it to Comanche. Spins, shoots and scores. Chance with a half a dozen now. And now it's a three point game with 1.15 left in the half. And again, shooting a little bit too early in the shot clock. White dumps it to Matu. He got hit on the shot. arm. And he gets his own rebound. Three point shot put up, not in on the line drive by Pinkert. And out of bounds. And that shot was taken with 33 in the shot clock, with 54 left in the first half. So TJ will sit down. Brandon Newman comes in. They see Quincy Pinkert against Denzel Holt. Here's the replay, Rufus. And we come back, Denzel Holt to Berger from his office. Wow. Nine points for Trevor Berger, and it's a tie game. Three point shot put up by Newman off the mark. Rebound corralled by Rafaelian. Rafaelian wow. is tackled oh. by. Uh, Rebellion <laughs> tackles Quincy Pinkert, yeah. that is. I'm so a little surprised that the near official who was trailing the play didn't make that call, but instead the official on the far side was the one who made an obvious foul that time by Rafaelian. And Rufus, the, the Normans have not fouled hardly at all this quarter. And so the shot clock's off. We got 25 seconds left here in the first half. Tie ball game at 25. Clearly, Londell won't shoot this one inside of five seconds left on the clock. Ten seconds left on the clock now. Tie ball game. Newman now gets it underneath to Snedeker yeah. with three seconds. And, and there you go. That's exactly what we call for. And going into the locker room at halftime, the Cardinals fly up to a two-point lead after a big Beverly Hills comeback in the second quarter. Beverly Hills outscored them at the 4-10 mark. It was a 21-14 game in favor of the Lawndale Cardinals. Down the stretch until the last three seconds, Beverly Hills outscored them 11-4. So it's been a game of big runs. But Andre Stedekor, DeAndre Stedekor, scores a basket with three seconds left on the last possession to give the Cardinals the lead at the half, 27-25. They're showing some good patience as well coming down the stretch on the, that last possession, Rufus, after looking a little confused, maybe losing focus there in uh, that second quarter. Well, I think it's easy to get caught up a lot of times in, 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 in the flow of the game and you're wanting to do a lot because they came out with a perfect game plan. Everything was working to perfection. But I'm sure as they go into the locker room at halftime, Coach Brownlee is going to remind them of that. All right, we'll be back with the third quarter right after this. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one 
every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Back at the Cardinal Cage, and before we go over the stats in the third quarter, let's go to McCall Hall. All right, back here at courtside with Rufus Washington, just about ready to get things underway. Chris White will be inbounding the ball. For the Normans, two points for Manicherry, both from the line. Six points for Denzel Holt. Six for Chance Comanche. Nine for Trevor Berger. Three three-point shots and two for Jalen Sands. Let's hope that he doesn't get going or Manicherry. Buddha Jones with six points. Eleven points for Shemezi Matu has been rocking the hizzy. And DeAndre Snedeker with, yes, I said that, eight points and two points for Chris White. Nobody in real foul trouble. That's good for either side. And, it, and right. we were talking, it's, it's pretty much a clean game. It has been, and, and a well-played game and a well-coached game, you know. Uh, that's why it's only two points here as we start the third quarter. And out-rebounding, uh, the Cardinals have 12 rebounds, eight offensive rebounds, Rufus, and six block shots. With the ball now as TJ was wide open for three and off the mark. Sands with the rebound. Didn't see him a whole lot. Then a takedown by Chris White. And he might have slipped on this questionable floor. So it'll be out of bounds. For Chris, that's his second personal first team foul. Somebody's got to go get the inbound pass. And just barely getting it in, Comanche hands it off to Rafelian. Being guarded by Beckles, who's also guarding Denzel Holt. Holt with it, gets a screen from Comanche. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Berger with a wow. three, and that wow. was over the defender, TJ. A dozen on four shots. And Berger's their secret weapon. What you got to tell you, that guy has a nice looking three point stroke. And that gives the Normans the lead for the first time tonight. Buddha Jones wow. can't get it to go down. The rebound goes to Jalen Sands. Tried to steer it in instead of shooting it in. Denzel Holt, the point guard for Jarvis Turner in Beverly Hills High School, with a nine point or nine game winning streak and that shot was missed by Berger. Cardinals trying to snap a two game losing streak. Underneath to Jones, no. And Comanche with good defense. Okay. Got Jones to take that shot wide and they're getting a little chippy. Right. Okay, this is where you gotta be careful here. Sands with an air ball. White with a rebound. Back on the Cardinals in a hurry. Semezi stops and waits for the offense to get on side. Three for White, no. Rebound to Comanche. Sands boxed out, boxed out Shemezi. Bounce pass back to Comanche. Wow. And one. And he fouled on the play. And let's see who to give it to. Wow. Comanche scores the basket. It's hard to see. I think they gave it to Chris White. I believe so, too. I saw a five and a timeout on the floor with 6.07 left to go in the third quarter by Chris Brownlee and the Cardinals. But for Comanche, he now has eight points and their biggest lead of the night. So now, Chris Brownlee trying to tell his troops as you see the Cardinals spirit squad. Timeout is over, so you just want to calm the troops down? Exactly. Well, first of all, they're on the short end of a 5 0 run out the box here in the first two minutes of the third quarter. And right now, Beverly Hills has control of the game, and that's what you don't want to see. Rondell's not able to get anything going that they want to get going offensively. 
There you see the numbers. Now, Chris uh, White, that's his third foul? Right. Okay. That's what I have. You got it. And I think I'm pretty sure that's what the book got. <laughs> Having said that, the point being, you know, a tough one on Chris. Comanche going for the and one the old-fashioned way. And Snedeker comes in for White. DeAndre, don't lose a whole lot when you get him in. He's been terrific off the bench. Absolutely has been. In fact, he's the defending Londale tip of the hat award winner. And you got a doozy tonight. <laughs> Dump down low to Semezi against Comanche, trying to get him to come with him, but he stayed at home. Snedeker for three with the left wow. hand. Had a feeling about that one, Rufus. And that's a one-point ball game. DeAndre Snedeker. Snedeker right now with a big game with 11 points. And now Holt trying to get around Beckles. Gets it to Navid Rafeli. Back out to Sands. Didn't take the shot mismatch because Smez is guarding him. Well, that he's not an outside shooter. Wanted no parts of the shot. He was open for a split second. Holt has it, drives in, takes a shot over Matu, won't go down. Shemezi with the rebound. Gives it to TJ, running the point for Chris Brownlee's Cardinals. Wow, you got to get Beckles. Uncharacteristically, this has not been a Delano Beckles game. Maybe that's the start of it right there. A three, that's Delano's first. Bucket of the game, his first shot, and that gives the Cardinals a two-point lead. So everybody's got to contribute tonight to snap this nine-game Norman winning streak. Shot taken from the elbow, an air ball taken by Delano. So Longdale goes on a little 6-1 run of their own. Here comes Shemezi, and the shot was blocked underneath by Comanche. Now Denzel Holtz trying to pass it to Comanche, but didn't get it. Okay, slow it down, set something up, and save his size, attack the basket. And, and that may force a timeout by Coach Turner. That's gonna force somebody coming off the bench, but TJ Johnson says, I want my first bucket, Rufus. He has two points and a four-point Lawndale lead. Brandon Newman will be in for the Cardinals next whistle. Navid Rafelin, lost handle on the ball, gives it right to Shemezi. This is the part I don't like to see. And he dribbled it out of bounds, turns it over to the Normans. Lost possession. You know, there's nothing wrong with the big man bringing the ball up, but there are times when you want to make sure you keep your momentum going and maintain control. And the best thing to do at that point is put the ball in the ball handler's hand. Semezi takes a break. Buddha Jones in. The ball's knocked out of bounds. But the foul's going to be called on Beckles on the play. That's his second. Third team foul, no fouls for the Normans. Denzel Holt gets it in as Ryan Manicherry comes in the ball game. And the Cardinals need to keep the lid on that young man's shot. Here comes Comanche coming in with the raid. And he has 11 points. Well, the Red Sea parted. <laughs> he just walked right on through. He sure did, that was too easy. TJ has it, now over to Beckles, gets it back. Brandon Newman gets it to Snedeker. Newman goes baseline, has an easy time and a nice little lay-in for Brandon Newman in his first bucket of the game. And, and Newman! The turnover and another basket, Brandon Newman with a quick four points. That's what you love about him. Newman, and now Buddha Jones in danger of getting a foul. And look out, we got a whistle and a let's reach in. Is that going to be on Delano? Well, let's see which way the official calls it. Looks like he's going to call it on DeAndre Snedeker 
crowd does not agree with the call. Yep. Wow, that, that was oh, a little well, of either go. way. But Snedeker gets the foul called against him. That's his second by our count. And that's a jump ball. And now let's see what's going on. Well, it's a jump ball, and the arrow shows that it's um, Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills ball. And that is correct because Lawndale inbounded to start the second half. Dentel Holt gets the inbound, being guarded by Beckles. And it won't show up in the scorebook, Lou, but the defense by Beckles on Holt has really been a difference maker here in the third quarter. Two minutes and 10 seconds left in the third. Newman with good defense as well, but the pass goes off and out of bounds, and it's turned over to the Cardinals. Good double teaming by Snedeker and Newman. And now a couple of substitutes coming on as Chemezi comes on, Broderick Jones goes off, Quincy Pinker comes on, and, and TJ goes off. TJ, Tedrick TJ Johnson, that is. Newman will bring it up. Along with Quincy Pinker, Newman will run the offense. Beckles for three! Wow. It's all what of a, a sudden. Bucket. It's a 42-33 game at the 150 mark. And look out, Comanche was double teamed and he was fouled. And that's okay, you can give that foul. That was Brandon Newman who picked up the foul. His first 15 foul. Now Delano is trying to get an explanation from Nathan Blake. 30 second timeout on the floor meanwhile. Didn't see who was taking it. Looked like it was uh, Coach Browning. Okay. McCall Hall. Let's go to McCall. And let's go to McCall. All right, you guys, real quick update. Um, Mezzi had to get out of the game because he got his finger cut. So Coach Brownlee had to make a very quick substitution. He had to put in Brandon Newman. Brandon Newman was a spark plug that they needed. He had a quick steal and four very quick points. Look out for Lawndale. They're going to hang on to this lead. Their coach is on them not to let up. Back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, McCall. It's a 12-8 uh, third quarter run for the Cardinals over Beverly Hills. And thanks for McCall for getting that because we did see Shemezi walk off and back into the locker room area. But he's back in the lineup now. Denzel Holt going against Quincy Pinkard now. Dumped down low to Comanche, and he puts it in over Chemezi. Didn't go for the slam, but he got the two. But Chemezi challenged him on the shot, but he just had better position. Snedeker on the give and go, no. And Comanche oh. comes down with the rebound. He's been playing better here in the third quarter. Holt. Dishes it off to Sam, pulling his wow. way in to lay it in. He has four points now, Rufus. There's four points, and just like that, Beverly Hills back in the game after they were down 42-33. Now they've gone on a 4-0 run of their own. Elbow knocked down Brandon Newman, who looked like he had his feet set, but no foul call. Newman putting on the brakes, gets it back in. The front court almost took the three, but Jalen Sands put a paw up in the air. Newman, he'll put up the shot for ah, Kamezi, no. Had the right idea, couldn't get it to go though. Under a minute left. Now Kamezi there's Kamezi does. with his slam dunk in return. He has 15 now. Good pass by Rafelian and a timeout on the floor. 30 second taken, Rafelian to Kamezi. <laughs> Woo! And Coach Brown was forced to use yet another timeout here with 48 seconds left in the third quarter. We've got ourselves a 42-39 game. Fortunately, the Cardinals on the long end of that 42-39 score. Seems like the Normans doing their usual late quarter run. They're doing a little mini 
6-0 run after the Cardinals put up a 7-0 run. And if you go back to the six-minute mark in the third quarter, the Cardinals actually had a nice 15-3 run because they trailed 27-30. And boy, when we looked up with a minute 50 left, it was 42-33. Uh, so, but they haven't been, here's the problem. They haven't been able to sustain the run, okay? And, and sustain it defensively, not necessarily offensively, but defensively. So two terrific teams here tonight at the Cardinal Cage. Glad you joined us. Shemezi to Snedeker for a long two. Yeah. Barry oh, Bennett to three. 14 points for DeAndre is second in a row. And that gives the Cardinals a little breathing room with under 30 seconds left in the quarter. Boy, did the Cardinals need that one. Holt being guarded by Pinkard. Now Sands has it. They're going for the last shot. Shot clock is dark. Ten seconds left. And let's watch them move now. Rafelin gets it to Sands from outside the free throw wow. line, and he makes a shot. Three a seconds dozen. left. Shot's Newman. good if it goes. <laughs> Quarter comes to an end, and Londale is nursing a four-point lead. And that last Beverly Hills basket was scored by Jalen Sands. Jalen Sands. Let's go to a giddy -o. Big basket for Beverly Hills there at the end of the third quarter. Much needed. I talked to one of the assistants for the Normans before the start of the third quarter. And I asked them, how do you think your team came out in the first half? He said, we played a little sloppy. We need to do a much better job on the offensive rebound and rebound in general. Jalen Sands, number 31, who just had that big basket for the Normans, had three rebounds. He leads the team in rebounds. All came in the third quarter as the Normans are trying to win their tenth in a row. Guys, back to you. All right, Aguirre and uh, Chance Comanche, who's on his way to Arizona, had 11 of his 15 points in the third quarter. And Jalen Sands with four points, and that was it. Right. Well, you know, the key is that right now while they're doing that, Lou, I'm looking at across the, across the way at Chemezi, and I think we got a blood on the jersey issue. And, of course, by rule, the jersey has to be removed. You know, they're trying to negotiate. Well, hey, if it keeps it tucked in, is that okay? You know, to me, I say, hey, you take a guy who's not going to get in the game tonight, give me your jersey. There you go. Okay. Simple as that. That's well. You know, that's uh, probably not a bad idea with all the safety issues going on. And he may have to change numbers. And that's what they're saying. He's got to go get a jersey. This is where you got to move with some speed. They aren't going to wait for that to happen. They're going to start play and tell them they got to bring a substitute on the floor. So Shemezi gets number 11. <laughs> and... And number 11 is, is a small number 11. <laughs> Thanks. John Fierro, the head official tonight of the three, says, confirms Rufus. Right. Blood on this shirt. And uh, Shemezi might have a bare midriff going on. Exactly. You know, we don't say it enough, Lou. In, in the years of doing this and the relationships that we built with the officials and how they help us out and understanding what's going on, John Fierro comes on to let us know that it's a blood on the jersey situation and they simply have Chemezi change jerseys. He puts on number 11. Matter of fact, number 11 isn't even on the roster. But here's what we've got. Lawndale starting the fourth quarter as they did against uh, San, Santa Monica and Beverly Hills with the lead only to go down to a defeat. Chemezi's shot doesn't fall. And we'll see if that number 11 is lucky for him or not. So far, not. 7.35 left to go in the fourth quarter. And I think Rashawn Haylock has a hit. He can come in any time. He can get his audio. But Jalen Sands has it and lays wow. it in. Wow. Eight points for Jalen. And he's waking up. Brandon Newman over to... Pinkard uses Comanche as a, kind of a leaning post, but now throws it away. And Jalen Sands with the steal. 
to Comanche. Lays it in. And a foul one. call, boy. A touch foul called on that play. So that ties up the ball game, Rufus. And now Comanche, with that layup try, has an opportunity to put the Normans back in the lead. Let's go to Rufus. Or, I'm sorry, let's go to Rashawn. Guys, I'm sure that number 11 in white looks familiar to you. Of course, that's Chimizi Metsu. Earlier in the first half on the breakaway duck, he cut his finger. So he had blood on his uniform. The referees just caught it. So they made him change his uniform, now, or made him change his jersey. So he's going with the number 11 the rest of the game, guys. 6.58 mark, and the Normans get the lead back on the three-point play the old-fashioned way by Chance Comanche. And that's a uh, lay-in and a man one one by Chibazi Matu. And that's going to be against Comanche, and if it is, that's his third. Of course, he's played a long time with the pair. So 13 points. And one point away from tying up this ball game. That's Buddha Jones, by the way, who made that. Well, actually, he's given them the lead back with an opportunity to extend the lead. He doesn't miss free throw. So Lawndale leads 47-46, courtesy of Broderick Jones' right. basket. 47-46. Lawndale with the lead. Give and go to Raffelin, and it goes out of bounds. Good defense by Snedeker. Now, I think at some point, you got to get one of your better defenders, who's Delano Beckles, back on the floor. Well, the Cardinals had great success with the full court pressure early on in the game. Maybe they should, they should go back to that? Here comes Pinkard, and okay. he slipped and fell. And Berger <laughs> says, Wait a minute, I didn't do it. Is it haven't you guys heard about the slippery floor here? <laughs> well, there's the hand in the back there and there's the contact. Actually, an easy call for the official and the correct call by John Fierro. That's just the second team foul on the Normans. Two, that, oh, that, oh, just like Pachinko. Quincy Pinkert gets his first point the hard way. <laughs> Two point lead now for the Cardinals. Wow. A little less drama there on that foul shot. And there you go. There's a full court pressure, but on the inbounds pass, a foul and uh, the steal, and that's going to get TJ two shots at the line. And that foul goes against Raffelin. That's his second. Third team foul. So there's that full court pressure defense we were talking for, talking about. Wow. TJ misses the first one. And how big are these free throws they're, down they're, the stretch? They're, they're huge, Lou. They're just absolutely huge. That would have extended the lead to four with a chance to take it out to five. Now they got to be happy if they can get it up to four. Navid Rafelin comes in for the Normans. One foul shot out of two. And Rufus's law, let's see if that works. First <laughs> one to 50. Well, well, if you're a Lawndale fan, you're certainly hoping it works tonight, but you got six minutes to go. A lot, lot of time. basketball time. Normans slowing it down. They know how to get it done. As they have won nine in a row and are perfect in Ocean League Action at 7-0. Two games ahead of the Cardinals in the standings. Berger trying to get around Shemezi Matu wearing number 11. And uh, boy, that's a nice uh, skinny fitting top he's got yeah. on there. He might set a new trend. There's the mismatch. Can't make it work though. Shemezi on another mismatch and trying wow. to get his own rebound. He and Buddha fought for the rebound and Comanche comes down with it. 5.20 left to go in the fourth quarter. Denzel Holt with it. And the floor's not big enough for both of those big men to be in the same space at the same time. Comanche, a nice bounce pass from Navid, and a shot blocked. Oh. Nope, it's called the goal the goal ten. Score the basket for Chase Comanche. Goal ten and against Chimizi. They so don't change the scoreboard yet, but it should be 
50 to 48. Now they do. Shot wow. taken by Buda Jones won't go down. Rebound is to the Normans, and all of a sudden the Cardinals aren't getting second chances. 4.45 left, and lay it okay. in for Comanche, who now has 22, Rufus. And we're tied at 50 with 4.36 left. Little baseline shot, no, says Comanche. Blocks it into the Cardinal bench as Quincy Pinker tried to take the 12-foot jumper. And now Delano Beckles comes back in. Ouch. Let's see who else is coming in with him. Chris White comes in. Shemezi goes baseline! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> His first bucket since the second quarter. That's his fourth dunk of the night, and none bigger than that, Rufus. With 4-10 left to go and brought this crowd to its feet. Here comes Jalen Sands. Wow. And a two-shot foul for Jalen. He's been a bull in a china closet as that foul goes on Chris White, number four by my count. You know, you took Chris White, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the reaction of Coach Brown and Coach Brown is saying, hey, same thing's happening. There you see the replay up on the other end as the crowd tries to distract Jalen Sands, but to no avail. Nine points for Jalen. Chris Brownlee talking to Chris White. Telling Chris, let's play within ourselves for the tie. And also 10 points wow. for Jalen Jones. And so we're tied at 52 with four minutes now left in the game. Delano, bad pass, but taken by Snedeker. Now over to TJ. Back to Chris White. White, now TJ. Underneath to Shemezi, but the ball's thrown away. Bad Try, pass. Yeah, bad pass. Tried to force it into a double team. No chance for Chemezi to get the ball there. But now, Beverly Hills has a chance to go back on top by a pair, if not three. Jalen Sands gets it to Comanche from the foul line. No, Chemezi wow. was there. Look out! Wow. Okay. And now 24 that, uh, points. Timeout on the floor. With 3.20 left in the fourth quarter. And Londell hanging their heads just a little bit. And that's not what you want to see. It was a lucky break, he got the ball, but man, this guy, this guy's a player, as are the other two on the Lawndale side as well. Tell you what, these Cardinals have been hanging tough. Got the lead back with a 5-0 run. But now, these Normans are on an 8-2 run. Chris Brownlee just trying to keep his guys from getting frustrated. Exactly. And get second shots. Jalen Sands has really come up big in the second half. Well, he certainly Norman. has. Now, he's come up big offensively, but I think you got to challenge him defensively. I don't believe that he can guard effectively either Buddha or Chimizi. And what you got to do is split the big men out on each block. You know, they're, they're, they're allowing Comanche to control the whole defensive paint. Now he's controlling the offense too. I mean, he has 24 points. And 20 of those, actually 18 of those points here in the second half. Coming down to three minutes, Semezi with a long shot, no, and the rebound goes to Comanche. And he said he's doing it on defense. Ruffellin to Sands, and they'll slow it down. Taking some time off the clock with a two-point lead. 2.45 left in the fourth quarter. Beckles guarding Holt, gets around him, takes the running shot, and Comanche had it, but Matu took it away. Now you got to wait for your big man to get there. You got to go down low, Chimizi. You got to go low. There it is to Newman to tie the game. 
He snuck in the back door, Rufus. Brandon Newman with the half dozen. With 2.15 left to go in the fourth quarter. Crowd trying to contain itself as are the Cardinals. They're hanging tough against the number one team in the Ocean League in a nine point, a nine game winning streak. Two minutes left in the fourth. And this is all about defense as we're at 54 all. Comanche rolls it, no, won't go in. Rebound wow. is knocked out of bounds by Buddha Jones with 150 left in the fourth and a new 35 for Beverly Hills. Here comes Manicherry in for Navid Rafelin. Chris Brownlee shouting out instructions. There's Trevor Berger, their other three-point specialist. Ball is skipped out to Sands. Being guarded by Newman. Bounce pass and a good one to Holt, but has to get it back outside to Manicherry. Lots of time on the shot clock, 20 seconds. Holt with it, trying to get around Beckles. Does, goes baseline, but has his shot blocked out of come bounds, on, not on. out of bounds by Snedeker. And here come the Cardinals on the turnover. Okay. Get down. No, no, not up there. Come on. You're big man. There is, there's your mismatch right there. Berger on Matu. Not a lot of length out there for the Normans. Matu takes the baseline. Oh! Come on, come on, get back, get back, no celebration. A two-point lead with under a minute left to go for Lawndale and 15 points for Semezi Matu, who's been inside and outside. Where's your defense? Timeout okay. taken by Jarvis Turner, a full timeout with 48.3 seconds left in the fourth, 22 left on their shot clock. And Lou, I think, Actually, he did Lawndale a favor because their defensive matchups were actually mismatches all over the floor. This is an opportunity. So you got too many people talking. Coach, Coach Brownlee now trying to settle his troops down, and they can barely hear themselves. If anything, I'd say to my fans, shut the heck up so my players can hear me. <laughs> well, you got that spirit. You got to hear it. Because once they get out of this gym, a lot of these kids are going to go into buildings with 20,000 and bigger. Right, exactly. And then you know the NBA, they play their music so loud, your ears bleed. <laughs> Johnny Parker also out there coaching his big guys, trying to tell them you got to watch out for the big Comanche driving in. Exactly. And Let's see the defense now for Lawndale as they come out. 48.3 left. 56-54 ball game. So it's been a seesaw battle. And now we'll be checking the shot clock or the clock. The clock hasn't moved since the timeout. So I don't know what they're checking on. Well, I don't think the clock is an issue. I think perhaps, and I'm going to assume the scoreboard, although by every count that we have, the score is correctly, is correct, I should say, but clearly there's something that's a miss that the officials are saying, let's get straight here. Rashawn is over there. Maybe Rashawn will be able to give us some insight on exactly what they're talking about in a moment. Now John Fierro, the lead official, along with Lonnie Bennett, talking to the Normans bench. Maybe it's a substitution. Well, whatever. Well, Matt Cherry's been in the ball. Was in the ball game before the timeout. <laughs> At any rate. Ball is going to be inbounded just to our right. Mana Cherry going to try to inbound it. And wow. take it away. Buda Jones takes it away from Comanche. Gets it to Newman. And now they have to change the shot clock back. That hasn't changed. Now it does. Newman gets it to back. Coach is telling his guys to foul. And Berger fouls. Yeah. 
Beckles with 32.4 seconds left. But it's only the third team foul, so Wandell will inbound the ball on the play and no shots. But with the foul, shot clock's dead now, so they can hold the ball as long as they want to. Manicherry and Berger out of the ball game, trying to get some defense in there and some fouls. Wow, there's oh, another, okay. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh. whoa, whoa. Okay, that wasn't pretty. Chemezi lost no, his tool there. He did. Jalen yeah. Sands. Now let's see what we got. Jalen Sands. Because we may have double intentionals. Let's see. Chemezi was pushed well, while Chimezi, he was in the air he, he by Jalen Sands. But Chemezi elbowed. Elbowed him, which could be ruled a punch. I don't think they're going to do that, but they are going to say it's perhaps an intentional foul. Bam! See, that, that's, that's not cocking. Right. That, that's cocking and throwing an elbow there. That, unfortunately, you have to that, address. That could get him ejected. We don't know yet, but. So we're going to have definitely an yeah. intentional foul, right? On Sebastian Matu, that would be his third foul. And so we got the coaches talking. What we need to understand, and from the looks of it, well, Chemez is still on the floor, so it doesn't appear to be an ejection. Now they could rule it an intentional foul both ways. And just hope the cooler heads prevail with 31.8 seconds left. Johnny Fierro is having a, a laugh with Manicherry out at the free throw line. And he has a chance to tie this game up. Ryan Manicherry does wow. tie the game up with two free throws. So that was a costly intentional foul and now the Normans will get the ball back underneath their own basket with 31.8 seconds left and the shot clock dark. And Lawndale is, is, in, is in the bonus in the one and one, so they can't afford to foul. Devin Holt, Denzel Holt, excuse me, against Pinkard. Wow. 25 seconds left. Now Jalen Sands with it. Sands, pretty much the difference maker in this second half. Got the retaliation intentional foul from the two, and then Manicherry with the two shots. Foul shots ties the game with five seconds left. One for the last shot is Comanche. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Rebound and quick yeah. goal. No. Yeah. We're going yeah. overtime. Yeah. Wow. What a game. Wow. So the Cardinals dodge a bullet. Matu is beside himself. Well, he made a mistake. That's the bottom line. That's on the way. That's on there. There's no dressing it up. He made a mistake. Fortunately, at least in regulation, it did not cost his team. All right? But here's what they lost. They had the ball. There was a foul by Beverly Hills. They had the ball with an opportunity and the lead. Yep. Okay. The ball and the lead with a dark shot clock. That's right. You know. And if Matu, if Matu doesn't foul it, here's the play again. Now there's a foul right there. Right. Now if Shemezi doesn't retaliate, there's the problem. If Shemezi doesn't retaliate, right. it's Matu at the line. Exactly. Well, no, he wouldn't have been at the line because there's only five team fouls, but That's it would have right. been their ball they would have... with no time on the clock. That's true. But I That's tell true. you, the officials didn't have the benefit of seeing it on TV like we did. But I got to tell you, they made the absolute correct call. I mean, because, boy, you know, it's, it's one thing, Lou, you know, when, when you do this and you clear out. But he cocked, he cocked the elbow and threw it, and uh, they made the call. Johnny Fierro about ready to put the ball in play. Shemezi Matu will tip it off against Chance Comanche. 56 all. 
Let's go to McCall. All right, it is absolutely electric in the Lawndale gym, but I had an opportunity to go over there and listen to the huddle. Coach Brownlee had to let his team know, look, it's 0-0 now, let it go. Whatever happened in the first four quarters, now it's 0-0, it's whoever wants it more, keep pounding the ball. So hey, look out for a thriller, it's time for overtime here at Lawndale, back to you guys. All right, McCall, we'll see if cooler heads prevail. Jalen Sands, big difference, so has Comanche. Yeah. He now has 26 points, Rufus. And a two-point lead. Brandon Newman gets it to Shemezi way out front. Beckwitz. And for the fans' information, overtime is only four minutes. Ball is tipped away, but Matu has it out of bounds. It gets turned over to the Normans. 14 turnovers by my count for the Cardinals. And the two has to sprint back and get ready. He's walking the floor. You know, that's body language that you don't like. You gotta be. Ball is tipped out of bounds. 3.16 left to go in overtime. The Cardinals just have to shake it off because this Norman team came to win. They want to win their 10th in a row. Holt. Trying to get wow. it. And now and to Berger for three. Look out. And Comanche has the ball there knocked is, away by is. Jones. Matu has it. Matu puts it up. No, but he'll get two shots at the line. So let's see. Was that Denzel Holt? Whoa. Or are they going to call well, that a non shooting see. foul? Wow. So they call that a non-shooting foul. I don't know where that came from. I, 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 I don't either. That's an interesting call, but in the judgment of the official, although boy, he was one foot from the basket, of course you got to ask yourself, what would he be doing if he wasn't going to shoot? <laughs> All right. So the Normans catch a break there with 2.45 left in OT. Bounce down low, bounce out of bounds, okay. bounce to Beverly Hills. Nope, okay. it's you tipped to well, well, the Cardinals. To the Cardinals. Uh, that was Sands who knocked it away. The pass was at his feet. Brandon Newman with it. 2.40 left. 19 seconds left on the shot clock for the Cardinals. Newman gets it back out front. Now gets it back with a little teardrop. Won't fall. Wow. Comanche wow. with the rebound. No second chance shot for the Normans, but the wow. ball is taken and stolen by Newman, and gets it back out front. Newman that's is gonna be a one nailed. One. Let's hope Brandon is okay. Gets up under is his own muster. By Sands. So that's a good sign. I believe that was Jalen Sands, his third personal. And a one and one for Newman. So Newman has a chance to tie the ball game up with 2.20 left to go in OT. And DeAndre Snedeker comes back on for Chris White. Get a little bit more hops in there for rebounding at the line. Big, big free throws. These are one and one free throws. Wow. No. 2.19 left to go in overtime. A two point Beverly Hills lead. Rafaelian gets away from the full court pressure, the double pressure. And tipped out of bounds. Wow. It'll be a Beverly Hills ball. And it went off of Quincy, or actually Delano Beckles. 21 left on the shot clock for the Normans. Nursing a two point lead with 2.06 left here in the first overtime. Sands hands it off to Rafaelian. Now, Holt. Back to Sands. Comanche wow. from the elbow. No, rebounds wow. off, gets his own Ooh. rebound, and puts it up and in. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! And one. Whoa! Yes. After roughing up Matu on the way. Wow! The official, Nathan Blake, makes that call against Matu. That's his fourth foul. That extends the lead to 56 to 60 in favor of Beverly Hills. 
I'd love to see that one again. I'm sure they have it. We just saw the replay, so we'll see it once again. And I think if you're Coach Brownlee, you have a right to be concerned there. Okay, there's the foul. That foul is on Buddha. If you're going to call it on anybody, it's got to be on Jones. Because Shemezi took the fall, so that's a second on Jones. And Shemezi tried Frank, to convince to the officials that uh, he was right. set on his defense. So now, it's a four-point lead, could turn into a five-point lead. So Lawndale just needs to get the ball back, and there you see it there. See? Yeah, I mean, that, that looks like position to me. Granted, he spread a bit, but boy, I'm not sure what else you can do to get that call. So the scales of justice tilted slightly orange here late on in the game. It's Chance Comanche going to the line for the old fashioned three. Gets it. 29 points for the senior headed to Arizona. Now Newman gets it into the two to lay it in. He has 16, and that's the first bucket in overtime for Lawndale with the full court pressure that's been so successful in a timeout wow. called by Jarvis Turner, who wow. comes out to center court. Wow. With 128 left to go in overtime. Okay, well, again, 29 on the shot clock, but they get a fresh 10 second count. So good defense, and now Semezi trying to find a lucky number and a bigger right. jersey. Right. So he changes his jersey. Well, he changes again. To number 23. Sure. So he's been 4, 11, 23. What the heck? You got to find that winning combination. There you go. Wow, lots of time left, though, Lou. So it's a three point lead, a one possession game for the Cardinals. Sands will inbound the ball for Beverly Hills. Trying to break, and Comanche gets it. Now Rafelin has it against Newman. Waiting for Comanche to get back on. Rafelin. On the weave to Berger. That's okay. And every defender, every Lawndale defender is on top of the ball. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Obviously, they're looking for a Comanche, but you got to keep the ball away from him. And that's Buddha's job. Sands with two seconds with a wild shot. Jones with the rebound for the Cardinals. Under a minute left to go. They can tie it this time down. And Snedeker is a deadly three-point shooter. We'll see if they go for the three. Here's the mismatch with Buddha, but he's too far out. He takes baseline anyway, goes up well, air ball, but he'll get two shots at the line with 42.7 left in overtime. Sands with the foul. That should be his fourth. Eighth team foul. And going to the line is, that's wow. not Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's Shemezi Matu. And he has two shots, so no one-and-one one situation. Sands comes out limping. By my count, he hasn't fouled out, but maybe. He has four fouls, but like, at least by my count. But he's sitting down like he's out of the game. Or he might well, come he's, back in. He's, well, he's hurt. Right. Yeah, he's taking the shoe off, and now he's taking the sock off. So maybe he twisted an ankle 
although I'm not a doctor. I have played one. Right. And you stayed at the Holiday Inn last week. <laughs> That's right. Wow. This is the first one. And Shemezi. Is three out of five. Uh-oh. What? Well, we got a... Whoa! Uh, lane violation. That's what it looks like he's gonna call, but... Oh, wow. Okay. So a lane violation nullifies the, the foul shot? N nullifies the foul shot. And the officials have been watching that the whole game. Boy, they, they, they've tightened things up down the stretch. So missed opportunity for the Cardinals with 42 seconds left. The clock hasn't started yet. And finally the clock starts, but the whistles go. Johnny Fierro talking to Nathan Blake about the clock. And so if you're Lawndale, first of all, it's 18 fouls apiece. Here, you may as well extend the game. I think you got to start fouling and foul early. You can't afford to play out possession, although some would do that. Now, they may try to play it out, but you're down by three. And if they run out the possession, there are only nine seconds left. So they take, take it down to 38. That's about right, because there was 42.7 seconds when we started. So the ball is inbounded to Raffelin. Raffelin trying to get around Newman. Velcro defense by Brandon. And a shove yeah. called on Newman, and here yeah. we go with the one and one. Yeah. Brandon's second, ninth team foul. There's a shove. Both of them were being aggressive. And right now, Beverly Hills pretty much 29 seconds away. This is a one and one, though, so there's still plenty of time left. But they're so inching closer to that Ocean League title. Snedeker comes out, White comes back in. Raffelin misses the front end, Matu with it. You gotta push, well, still you gotta push. Three possession, you push. three point game, and Matu for the tie. Ooh. No, rebound is off, taken by the Normans, and a foul with 19.9 seconds left. Beckles with his third personal. Tenth team foul should be. So wow. it should be double bonus. There's a lot of hands on the ball for that to result in a foul. And a timeout taken by the Cardinals. And that's what Coach Brownlee is going out to question. And I think it's a good question to be asked. Because his position is, hey, my man has his hands on the ball, and the other guy simply attempts to rip away and goes to the floor. How does that create a foul by me? Didn't touch him. All ball. That's yep. what he's saying. Doesn't like the answer that he got. And they're 19.9 seconds away and three points down with 10 team fouls. So now it's double bonus. Well, even though there's eight team fouls for Beverly Hills, they did come late. So here's the replay. Okay, so he's gonna call the reach in here. I'm assuming that foul is gonna go on Buddha. Otherwise, because Beckles, Beckles has on, a tie up. They called it on uh, 24. Okay, well that's Beckles. And... So 19.9 left. And going to the line to shoot the double bonus is Ryan Manichero. Oh, check that. That's Iman Rafelin. Misses the first one. It's a double bonus. So 
If Rafaela makes this one, it's a two possession game for the Cardinals with under 20 seconds left. And that's exactly what it is. So now you can go for the deuce. What that sets up is to attack the basket. And Newman tries to get it to the two. Ball well, scrambled well, he's got to be out of bounds. And it's out of bounds, but who do they give the ball to? Well, the ball has to go to Lawndale, I would think. So Lawndale gets the ball with nine and a half seconds left. There you see Denzel Holt out of bounds with the ball. And Johnny Parker doing some mop up. Tell him, you got to get him some bigger towels. Right. <laughs> Tense situation here for the Cardinals. You got to shoot quickly. Newman, no. And the rebound is taken by Rafaelin. Rafaelin is fouled by Newman. With two seconds left, that basket won't count. And Lawndale here at home will take a tough loss against this Beverly Hills Normans team. The Now we can officially declare them the winners of the Ocean League 2014-15. So going to the line yeah. is Navid Rafaelin, who is 0 for 2, now 0 for 3 from the line. And a very dejected Lawndale team. Chris White hanging his head in disbelief. So Rafaelin's free throw is in. He has one point on the night. So two seconds left. Newman heaves it up. It'll count if it goes. Didn't get there. Yeah, but the Beverly Hills Normans win their 10th yeah. game in a row, 63 to 58 in overtime. And Rufus, the Normans held Lawndale to just one bucket in overtime. Yeah. Tough, tough loss for the Cardinals at home. A great game, though. We knew it would be coming in. We thought the Cardinals had a we, well, we didn't think, we knew that they had a, a better than legitimate chance to win the game, but somehow or another, it got away from them at the end. And now they're gonna fall in league play, their third loss, and it'll be five and three overall. The worst they'll do in league is third place. They still got a shot at second, but second means nothing. It's a league title that you really want. And for them, a tough, tough loss tonight at home. I'm sure a disappointing game for the Cardinals who look to run through this Ocean League. But Santa Monica also putting a monkey wrench into the Cardinals' plans as well with the win the other night, 59 to 54 at Sam Ohio. And, and your three the, league losses, Lou, have come by a combined total. Five tonight, one the other one, um, of about 10 points. I'll get that for Yeah, it was five tonight, five uh, against Santa Monica, and one against Beverly Hills. So you got three losses in league play by a combined, uh, combined total of 11 points. And boy, this was as tough as they get, though, here at home. It sure is, and uh, uh, the Beverly Hills Normans just showed why they are one of the top teams in the area. And uh, Chance Comanche really putting on a show, scoring only six points in the second quarter and then ending up with 29. Exactly. Well, I mean, they show why they've got one of the better big men, although losing her with uh, losing her. Lawndale uh, with a pair of their own but tonight they just didn't solve the riddle of, um, of Beverly Hills, even though at many stages throughout this game they controlled it, and we'll go through that in, the, um, in, in some of the post-game stuff, and I know that Rashawn and the crew will have a lot of feedback on that. But if you're, if, if you're Lawndale, you don't linger on this too long. It's a tough loss, but the things that matter, you know, the, now you've got, you got to set, you, you got to create a new set of objectives because league title is out the window. Right. So now you're looking forward to the playoffs and finishing on a positive note. 
So the uh, next game for the Cardinals is El Segundo right here at the cage. And, and we'll then, have that game, actually. That's right. And uh, the big game for Beverly Hills is they uh, host Santa Monica, who's uh, gotten their confidence back. And it'll be a good matchup with Jace Johnson and uh, Chance Comanche there. It, it will be. But, it, but if you're Beverly Hills, the, on, the only thing that Beverly Hills really would be playing for in that game is, is the opportunity to continue undefeated in league play because they've already clinched the league title. But that means a whole lot too. I mean, not every team goes undefeated. So that's what they'd be playing for. It'll be interesting to see if we were there to see how uh, Coach Jarvis Turner approached that game, knowing that he already has the 2014-15 Ocean League title in their hip pocket. That's right, and uh, congratulations to them. Fun to see the Normans and uh, what a team they have. A very well coached team, very disciplined team, and uh, the uh, Lawndale Cardinals, the guys that got him there in the third quarter, DeAndre Snedeker and Delano Beckles, didn't have any points in the fourth quarter. And uh, that's a big difference as well. Jalen Sands, like we said, for Beverly Hills, was one of the difference makers as well, as he had uh, uh, eight of his ten points in the second half. Well, the, the, you know, the, the Beverly Hills team is a very interesting team. They have one true star, okay, and they've built around that one true star. And, of course, by now everybody knows that's uh, Chance Comanche. Uh, and, and everybody else fills in. They're role players, but they play very well. And they execute what Coach Turner tells them to do. Of course, the imposing presence that he is, I think I'd pretty much do <laughs> oh, yeah. whatever he told me to do as well. That's Berger it. came How off high. the bench exactly with, you know, with three pointers that, 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 that created problems for uh, for Lawndale, and you know the postmortem will simply say they just didn't have enough and do enough in order to win the game. A game that they did play very well, though. All right. Well, we're waiting for the coaches and players to come out for interviews. Why don't we go over some scoring for the Beverly Hills Normans, who improved to 19 and 5 overall, 8 and 0 in Ocean League action, and now a 10-game winning streak. And uh, Navid. Raffelin with one point that was in overtime and then Ryan Manicherry didn't get a field goal but uh, he has had four field goals and two none bigger than uh, when Shemezi Matu retaliated with the elbow for the intentional foul and uh, got those two free throws to uh, get the lead or actually tie the game uh, and send it into overtime for the Normans and it looks like we're getting ready at center court. But uh, first, I want to tell you that uh, Eman Rafelian had a point. Denzel Holt had six all in the first half. 29 points for Chance Comanche, 12 for Trevor Berger, and 10 points for Jalen Sands. Let's go to center court. Thanks, guys. Brodzik's a tough loss for you guys. You guys dominated most of the game. You should have won. Uh, what are your thoughts? How do you think your team performed here? Uh, we, I think we played pretty good. We just like lost track at the end of the game. Lost our focus a little bit, just like start slacking. They came back and beat us. What was the message in, in the huddle, uh, start of the overtime? What did coach tell you guys? Uh, don't foul, just keep playing defense where we even playing. Don't foul and box out. And what's the strategy remaining? You guys want to finish strong here. A couple more games for the playoffs. What's the strategy going forward? Um, just keep playing hard, playing, playing as a team, and get our chemistry better. Thank you very much. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Guys, back to you. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Gideo. And, uh, well, you heard it there. And uh, Broderick Jones saying they just couldn't get it done tonight. Right, and let's give them a lot of credit. Gracious in defeat, composed, you know, g gave a good analysis of it. Uh, but here, we, we get the responsibility to tell it like it is. Also, not that he didn't, but the difference maker in this game at the end was the intentional foul. Uh, by Chamizu Me Too, mm -hmm. inside of 30 seconds left, you've got the ball on your side, shot clock dark, okay? And Granted, it, it, it wasn't even that hard of a foul, you know? It, it, you know? And it was right in front of your bench, and of course, you rear back, cock your elbow, official sees it, makes the absolute right call, and there goes the ball game, ultimately. It didn't go then, but boy, just think about it. If you've got the ball, no shot clock, they've got to keep fouling you, man. That's, uh, well, that, that opened the door for, uh, for the Normans as well. Well, for the Lawndale Cardinals, and they fall now to 
a 14 and 10 on the year and and also five and three in the Ocean League now have lost three in a row TJ Johnson with three points Buddha Jones who we just saw with eight two points for Quincy Pinkard six points for Shemezi Matu six for Brandon Newman 14 points for DeAndre Snedeker and six for Delano Beckles and neither one of those gentlemen scored in the fourth quarter which uh, was pretty big but you got to credit the Norman defense for shutting them down and two points for Chris White the two uh, foul shots he made in the first quarter right well and you're right it's defense because Snedeker was hot you look at his numbers and you just went through them he had a heck of a game I think you're saying he had 14 points and hit a couple of huge threes uh, I thought it was important whatever they did to take him out of it Beckles I thought maybe hung on the bench just a little bit too long he's their best on ball defender right all right especially against the guards I mean I mean they simply have no one who's better they're all good but Orlando is the best well, okay. Denzel Holtz only had their point well, Delano, guard. Delano, I should say, sorry. Uh, Denzel only had uh, six points, did not score in the second half. So there, you'd sacrifice that scoring from Delano to uh, shut down their point guard off the scoreboard. Well, you still got something productive sure. out of him if he if he's doing that. Um, I think the other thing, as you start to go into uh, postseason play, you got to figure out a way. Remember, I mentioned the point. They have one big man. Uh, Sands, you know, is, 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 a, mid, is a tweener uh, as a player, and they didn't get as much as they could have or perhaps should have out, out of their post play. And instead, the, the offense that they ran allowed uh, Comanche to essentially guard two guys. All right. Well, while we're waiting for some more guests on the post game show, Rufus and I have a chore to do to pick out the player of the game and the tip of the hat. So why don't we do that and take a break and we'll come back. Hi, I'm Donnell Beverly from the University of Connecticut, home of the 2011 National Championship UConn Huskies basketball team, and you're losing your Olympians. Beverly around the back, follow a jumper, good, beautiful shot. It wasn't too long ago that I was playing basketball right here. I just want to thank him for having me here. I'm, I'm honored to play here. And the Huskies are the top dog in 2011. Winning the NCAA championship has always been a goal of mine, but so is getting a great education that will last me a lifetime. You can achieve your goals too. All you have to do is work hard and dream hard, and you can do anything you put your mind to. here at the Cardinal Cage and the final score 63 58 Beverly Hills over Lawndale in overtime let's go out to center court for some final thoughts Push-ups afterwards, Coach. Yeah, Jim Hill Jr. <laughs> Lawndale's opportunity to lead championship snatch right from underneath them here tonight. Looks like they're going to be running some sprints. I'm probably going to be running too. Rookie mistakes here tonight. Rashawn Haylock, McCall Hall, Egidio DeLeo with the win here tonight. Beverly Hills clinches at least a share of the Ocean League title. Improvement to 8 0 in league play here tonight. Egidio DeLeo. When you talk about this Beverly Hills team, you can't say anything about the Normans unless you say something about Chance Comanche. 29 points tonight. 23 of those came in the second half in overtime. He was a man. He simply took over this game tonight. Exactly. He's going to be playing at Arizona next year and definitely a rough start in the beginning, the first two quarters. You didn't really notice him. Obviously, you notice him because he's, he's six foot ten out there, but uh, you didn't really notice in his play. In the second half and then in the overtime, he definitely stepped up, had five total rebounds. Three huge blocks in that second half uh, in the third and fourth quarter that really got the Beverly Hills side of the crowd really erupting. And also a guy that was a supporting role, number 31, Jalen Sands, I thought stepped up huge for Beverly Hills. And this was a statement win for the Normans. They're a no, they're going to be league champs, and they deserve it. I know you're, so we were talking about Sands a little bit off the air. I know you're really high on him. What was so impressive about him to you tonight? 
he was doing it all. He was getting rebounds. He led the team in rebounds. Uh, he was making nice shots. He was getting good looks. And when the team was getting a little disorganized, he organized play on the court. And he was kind of a leader there, uh, a veteran and a kind of a, a commander of things for the Normans. And he did a fantastic job, like I said, on offense and defense. And then uh, Spirits had got this team going. And, and a huge win. Like I said, a big statement win for Beverly Hills. They are now a team to be reckoned with. And everybody is going to take notice after beating Lawndale two in a row this year. Yeah, Beverly Hills, of course, on the open division watch list as is Lawndale but Beverly Hills they're ranked number five in their division that's division 3A and there's some monsters in that division I know they want to get rid of, get rid of uh, this league championship out of the way and try to compete for a CIF title but that's not going to be easy at all not going to be easy for Lawndale either most importantly from an emotional standpoint as I bring in McCall Hall now how do you pick up the pieces after such a tough loss here tonight? Yeah, now let, let, let's go back real quick. Agidio said that was a statement win for Beverly Hills. Hey. Well, let me tell you, that was a statement loss for Lawndale because earlier in the season, they had the same situation. They blew an 11-point lead and lost by one. Tonight, it seems like the same situation. They were up in the first half by about eight points. Then things have started to collapse. And going back to your point, it's all mental. These guys, you, you can't deny it. They are very athletic. You've got Mezzi going to USC, the Jones kid, he's going off to UTEP. But here's the thing, can they get over that mental block? And that was the difference tonight. They had an opportunity with overtime. It's 0-0, and their coach told them, let it go. Bad calls, bad plays, missed opportunities, let it go. And they simply could not do it. So if they're going to make a splash in the playoffs, if they even make it at this point, they've got to stop beating themselves up and moving on to the next play. He talked about it. You got to move on. McCall said it perfectly here tonight. One thing that, that you got to commend Beverly Hills for tonight is the play of Chance Comanche. He had 29 points tonight. Chemezi had 18 to lead this Lawndale team, but one big against two bigs, and it looked like Comanche got the, the best out of Metu and Jones here tonight. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mezzi and Jones are forceful players. I honestly believe that they are mad at the rim every time they go at it. But here's the deal. When you have opportunities to make baskets, you have to you have to finish at the rim. I saw a lot of plays tonight where Mezzi and Jones blew layups, uh, missed opportunities. But this kid from uh, this going to Arizona, he actually made a lot of plays that were wide open. He did the right thing. If he got hit on the layup, he still made sure that he completed that shot. He got the and one. So I mean, I understand they're athletic, but it's the little things. It's finishing at the rim, and they just couldn't do it, even with the size. I had a hard time tonight closing. They had a 15-2 run. Looked like they were going to create some separation, did Lawndale in the third quarter, but Jarvis Turner credited his bunch. They came right back and were extremely efficient on the offensive end. You saw them do things, set those little screens at the elbow to kind of free up Chance Comanche, and he definitely was able to get things done here tonight as Beverly Hills picks up the huge road win and clinches at least a share of the Ocean League title. For Gideo DeLeo, McCall Hall, Rashawn Haylock, sending it back over to you guys. We'll see you at the next one, Lou Rufus. All right, thank you very much. Uh, three Amigos segment there, and uh, McCall Hall with some good insights uh, because she was a big person there for the Washington Huskies. And, Spoken uh, she like knows, a player. She knows, she knows what she's talking about. Well, it's time now for our vaunted player of the game and tip of the hats, and our player of the game is DeAndre Snedeker, number 22. He had 14 points, but unfortunately was shut down in the fourth quarter when they needed it most. As a matter of fact, the Normans shut down the Cardinals 15 to 11. And of course that big foul play that uh, helped tie the ball game. And our tip of the hat is? Tip of the hat tonight goes to a guy who performed on the defensive end. Normally an offensive star, but he was called on to play good defense and that's what he did. Knocked down a couple of threes and uh, got to recognize him. Baby brother of Delano Beckles. Tonight it was Arlano Beckles. Oh, yeah. The other way around. The other way around. Sweet. Delano. Arlano was last year. We see him every game <laughs> here right. at home. But Delano Beckham. Okay, well, this was for Arlano. That's okay. this for Orlando's. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, and let's now, go for Delano. And for Delano Beckles, this one's yours, brother. You there know, you go. Not quite now, as nice as the red one, but I don't know, you know, the hat, you take a look it. at it. Now, is that a derby? That, that's a derby, a bowler, uh, named a Harker by Bailey, of course. And it just, Sweet. you know, a little something I put together for the night's contest here at the Cardinal Cage. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up from the cage where uh, for Rufus Washington and for Gideo DeLeu Ruf and, uh, and McCall Hall and Rashawn Haylock and Karen Bright. This is Lou Stowers also for the 
three time Star Award winning City TV crew led by Tom Strickfadden. Once again, the final score from the cage it was the Beverly Hills Norman 63 to 58 over the Lawndale Cardinals. Until next time, so long.